Good evening, everybody. We're going to go ahead and call to order the County Planning Commission for January 23rd, 2023. If you'll please call the roll. Member Borgia, we're waiting for you. Here via Zoom. Thank you so much, everyone. Member Ratho. Here. Corona Savignano. Here. Tadishi. Here. And Wong. Here. And you have a quorum. Thank you. If you'll please proceed with the announcements for this evening. The county fosters public engagement during the meeting and encourages public participation, civility, and use of courteous language. The county does not condone the use of profanity, vulgar language, gestures, or other inappropriate behavior, including personal attacks or threats directed towards any meeting participant. In compliance with the directives of the county, state, and centers for disease control and prevention, the meeting is open to public attendance pursuant to health and safety guidelines. The practice of social distancing and wearing of face coverings, mask or shield, is recommended for the health and safety of all persons participating in person during the meeting, although it is not required. To make a public comment, please complete a speaker request form and hand it to the clerk. The chairperson will call your name when it is your turn to make a comment. To make a telephone comment at today's meeting, you will be kept on mute in Zoom until the chairperson calls for teleconference public comment. When the chair opens public comment for a specific agenda item or off agenda matter, please use the star nine function to raise your hand. The clerk will request for you to unmute your phone, use star six when it is your turn to make your public comment, and you may begin your public comment. You may also send a written comment to board clerk at sackcounty.gov, and your comment will be routed to the board and filed in the record. And that concludes the announcement. If you'll all please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And that moves us to item number one this evening. Item number one is a use permit, special development permit and design review located at 4837 Auburn Boulevard on the north side of Auburn Boulevard, approximately 445 feet southwest of the intersection of Auburn Boulevard and Amber Lane in the Carmichael Old Farms community and the environmental dock is exempt. Planning Commission members, uh, my name is Irving Huerta, Assistant Planner and Project Manager for the Legacy Motors at Auburn Boulevard. If we may go to the next slide, please. Um, I'll get us started with the following presentation. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Alma. <laughs> the project site is located at 4837 Auburn Boulevard, approximately 445 feet southwest of the intersection of Auburn Boulevard and Amber Lane in the Carmichael Old Foothill Farms community. The project site is developed with an existing building and has some minimal frontage landscaping. The surrounding area around the project site is primarily composed of commercial slash retail uses. Given the existing building, the site has been used in the past as an indoor recreational facility, landscape and maintenance materials retail store, a tattoo studio, and retail sales for outdoor vehicles. The project site is zoned general commercial. Surrounding land uses consist of the following. To the north, we have a vacant uh, parcel commercial I do want to note that this parcel is split zoned as well with general commercial and residential five. However, there is no dwelling unit on site. To the east, we do have an industrial building. To the south, a contractor yard. To the southwest, we do have a multi-tenant commercial buildings. And then to the west, we have an industrial warehouse. The applicant is requesting the following entitlements for the project site. A use permit to allow for new and used auto sales, as well as for the storage of operable vehicles and auto wholesale on a 0.44 acre property in the general commercial zoning district. The entitlement request also includes a special development permit to allow the proposed project site to deviate from the following development standards. Frontage landscape planner requirements, specifically the tree requirement along the front, which the applicant is deviating from, wall and fencing requirements, and landscaping adjacent to the residential zone, specifically in the rear 
uh, part of the uh, subject project site, which is adjacent to that split zoned parcel. And lastly, a design review to comply with the Sacramento County countywide design guidelines. So this slide demonstrates uh, the site plan as well as some site context photos of the project site. The proposed use uh, would operate within the existing 7,600 square foot building, which includes office, retail, and storage space for both the auto sales and auto wholesale operation. No storage of operable vehicles um, are proposed to occur inside the existing building. The applicant has indicated uh, that the ground floor of the building will be utilized for office space and as a showroom for auto accessory parts and other uh, retail products. Non-automotive storage space is proposed on the second floor of the building. The storage space would include inventory of accessory parts, uh, file cabinets, and other products. No auto repair service is proposed as part of the project. Um, On-site storage would also serve at the other Legacy Motors location, um, and that location is located within the city of Roseville, and that's the site where the auto repair currently occurs. There's also nine existing parking spaces that will serve both as employee and customer parking. There are five spaces located behind the existing building, and there is uh, four other spaces, including one uh, ADA space in the front of the existing building. Lastly, a uh, 3,100 square foot area behind the building is what will serve uh, as the area for uncovered sales and storage of operable vehicles. The cars stored on site uh, would be used or would be uh, for both the private auto sales as well as for the auto wholesale. The proposed project has been conditioned to limit storage and auto sale displays uh, to the uncovered sales area behind the building, with none allowed being in the, with none allowed in the front property. The Carmichael Old Foothill Farm CPAC met on June 8, 2022, and recommends that the Planning Commission approve the requested entitlements. The vote was four yes, zero no, and two absent. The Design Review Advisory Committee, the DRAC, met on April 21st, 2022, and recommends that the Planning Commission find the project in substantial compliance with the design guidelines, provided that a condition uh, be added to the project so that the frontage landscaping be updated to meet current landscape standards. The proposed project uh, is consistent with the general plan, community plan, and zoning code as conditioned. The project is also compatible with surrounding zoning and land uses. There are no significant environmental concerns. The project was supported by the Carmichael and Old Foothill Farm CPAC, and it was found to be consistent with the design guidelines by the DRAC. I do want to highlight um, some key conditions that are part of this project. Condition five is regarding, or is regarding requiring a substantial compliance um, if there is any major or minor auto repair services proposed later on. Condition six is regarding an amendment to the use permit should the applicant propose to store RVs or boats in the future. Condition seven is regarding auto sales and the auto display area in the front yard area, as well as parking stall identification. And lastly, condition eight is regarding the applicant provide a landscape plan to planning and environmental review for review and approval based on the recommendation from DRAC. Planning and Environmental Review staff uh, recommends that the Planning Commission approve the following. Recognize the exempt status of the request under Section 15301, Class 1 of the California Environmental Quality Act. Approve the use permit subject to the findings and conditions. Approve the special development permit subject to finding and conditions. 
And lastly, find the project in substantial compliance with the design guidelines, subject to findings and conditions. This concludes uh, the end of my presentation. I am available to answer any questions that you may have. Um, the applicant, uh, Madam Mir, is in attendance as well. Thank you again for your time. Thank you, Mr. Huerta. Any questions for staff this evening? All right, Commissioner Borja, any questions for staff? No question this time. Thank you, Chair. All right, thank you, Mr. Huerta. At this time, I'd invite the applicant up to address the commission if you'd like. And the clerk will get you sworn in. Good evening. Um, please raise your right hand in the appropriate responses I do. Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give this commission is the truth? So help you God. If you do not swear, do you so affirm? Yes. Thank yes, you. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Please state your name for the record. Oh. Are you going to make any statements? No, I'm good. Uh, uh, all the information has been said, and then uh, we'll definitely continue with 120 days of act of uh, landscaping, whatever we have to do. And I really appreciate it if we get our uh, uh, license uh, uh, soon so we can uh, move forward and continue doing our business. We're waiting for this almost about 14, and 14 months, I believe. So, but uh, no comments then. Thank you so much. Sounds good. And you're in agreement with all the conditions of approval? Yes, I am agree with that, yeah. Excellent. Any questions for the applicant this evening? All right. Thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. With that, we'll go ahead and open up public comment. And for the record, we do not have anyone on Zoom who has raised their hand to make a public comment. Actually, we don't have anyone on Zoom. It's staff only, so, so far. And I have not received any speaker requests. Sounds good. We'll go ahead and close public comment and move on to commission deliberation. Or we can entertain a motion. I'll move staff recommendations. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right. Will you please call the roll? Member Borgia? Yes. Member Corona Sobignano? Yes. Tatishi? Yes. Wong? Yes. And Chairperson Rathel. Yes. And the motion carries by unanimous vote. Thank you. That concludes item number one. I will you please go ahead and call item number two. Item number two is a minor amendment and tentative subdivision map. It is located south of Glory Lane, east of Grant Line Road in the Kasumnas community. And the environmental document is a prior final environmental impact report and prior addendum. Low as it goes. Alma, you want me to wait till you pass them out? Okay. All right. Uh, good evening. I'm Jessica Brandt, interim principal planner, and I am here to present uh, the Cordova Hills Town Center Phase One project. So this project is located in the East County. It's on the east side of Grant Line Road, uh, about 2,500 feet south of Douglas Road. It's in the Kasumnas community. Uh, the city of Rancho Cordova is to the west across Grant Line Road. The request before you tonight are, are a set of minor amendments to the Cordova Hills Special Planning Area Ordinance and specifically the Land Use Master Plan um, that is a part of that ordinance and a phased tentative subdivision map to divide approximately 223 acres, uh, referred to as the town center village phase one area into 553 lots. So some context, um, currently the surrounding land uses are mostly vacant, uh, dry pasture, vacant land to the south is Kiefer landfill. And then the west is city of uh, Rancho Cordova, as I'd mentioned, which uh, does include active low density residential development. Um, as you can see at the kind of northwest portion of the aerial photo there. 
Some site history, uh, Cordova, the Cordova Hills Special Planning Area um, is currently undeveloped. Uh, it was originally created in 2013. Um, the entitlement package included a general plan amendments, a zoning ordinance amendment, a large lot subdivision map, affordable housing plan, and a development agreement. In 2016, uh, two small lot tentative subdivision maps were brought through and approved for two villages within the overall plan area. These are the University and Ridgeline villages. And then in 2018, amendments to the Cordova Hills Special Planning Area Ordinance, the uh, general plan and our bicycle master plan were approved to reflect and accommodate uh, some changes in uh, the land use designations to um, uh, reflect the South Sacramento Habitat Conservation Area, uh, preserve areas within the SPA. So this slide uh, zooms in to the area that we're talking about tonight. This is the um, rough town center area of the plan. Um, so just for some context, uh, the SP, it, all of this is zoned SPA. Uh, what you're looking at here are the land use master plan designations, land use designations. And uh, the sort of brownish purple is TC, which is, um, Town Center, HDR, which is the kind of, I don't know, peachy color, is high density residential. R is recreation, it's green. And then uh, PQP, as usual, is public, quasi-public. And then there is a small amount of um, AG designated land at the south, which is an agricultural designation um, and is actually, as you'll see as we get more detailed, uh, a basin. Uh, so the minor amendments to the Cordova Hills Land Use Master Plan really revolve around um, moving these designations uh, to better fit the ultimate small lot map that they're presenting to you tonight. Uh, they, uh, the minor amendments are considered minor because they really aren't changing the balance of each of these land use designations. Um, they are uh, roughly equal between the approved land use and their proposed land use. Really what you're looking at here are refinements to where they're placing certain items. Um, so for example, you have the school um, site, which is the public quasi-public, has moved from a central location uh, uh, just a uh, hair up and over to the east. Um, and then that had allowed the park site to move closer to the natural preserve area and create kind of a synergy there. Um, they also have uh, some shifts that are related to bringing in what they call couplet streets with park blocks in the central area of the plan um, and, uh, and moving around some of the, the high density residential to merge better with their overall further land use refinements. And I'll, again, have um, more exhibits that get into that further. So other than the land use, go to the next slide, um, the land use designation changes, um, there are a number of uh, changes to uh, Chapter 4 of the Land Use Master Plan, which is the Development Regulations and Design Guidelines, again, all in support of the overall uh, town center build out. Uh, these include additional standards for detached residential in the town center area, uh, some reductions in setbacks, uh, increases in height, uh, elimination of floor area ratios where they weren't actually applicable, um, and some other cleanup, uh, and, uh, and um, also a number of changes to street sections, again, relating to the couplet streets and then some other local street section changes. Uh, the, um, again, uh, <clears throat> none of these changes end up increasing overall density. And uh, let's see, I'd like to give kind of this illustrative land use um, plan here, uh, which should give a little more sort of context to all of these master, or these minor plans to the master plan. Get to that slide. So this, it's, it's what the applicant is calling their illustrative land use plan. Um, it, this is sort of the small lot map, if you will. 
Um, so this is showing how the lotting pattern is uh, put together um, with the land uses kind of superimposed. So these are not um, land use in the sense of a zone. Uh, these are what they anticipate each lot will be developed out with. So going from um, the outside in, you have uh, medium density, uh, residential, uh, various types um, that I'll get into in a minute. Um, and then that feeds closer into the central area, which is that Chrysanthi Boulevard and Town Center um, cross. And that moves to more uh, dense residential development and then uh, into mixed and commercial development at the core. And then all of that feeds, this is a little awkward, grant line is showing on the top, that's really the west. It feeds to the east to the school site and the park, um, which in the overall Cordova Hills land use master plan are considered uh, for uh, the region. So um, not just the town center, um, but they would also be regional gathering places for um, some of the other residential subdivisions that are part of the land use master plan to the east. And so this is, I apologize, really hard to see, um, but it does break out even further the residential uh, types that they are bringing forward as part of this plan. Um, and you have, I, I think what I just wanna highlight here is that there is a, a wide variety. Um, you have detached single family residential that uh, again is on the medium density uh, spectrum, everything from semi-custom homes at the southeast corner and then moving towards um, alley loaded single family homes as you get closer to the core. Uh, townhomes as well uh, along some of the major uh, thoroughfares and then uh, some uh, multifamily residential uh, kind of circling around that commercial area. And so just a little more detail, this is that north portion. And then the south portion, again, focusing on the residential components. Um, there are, uh, you know, for Sacramento County, some novel types of residential development in here. They have a green court design, um, the, the townhome designs, alley loaded. Um, we don't see as much of that, and I'm sure the applicant would be happy to give you more information on um, how they see those uh, developing out over time. And then you come to the actual small lot tentative subdivision map. And again, this is a, this is a large map. Um, and so it is, uh, is very hard to read, uh, but the exhibits in your package should give you a good idea of how these lots fit together, where you would get access, um, and uh, gen their general sort of what they call, I think, lock, lot and block uh, development pattern for the entirety of the town center area. And so this is showing you the north area. And then you get into the south area of the site. And as I had mentioned earlier, at the very bottom there, there is an um, agriculturally designated site. However, that is a drainage basin. Um, the applicants have already been working with DWR on um, getting the, the reviews on the drainage basin. Um, they've actually started working on some improvement plan reviews as well um, and have been uh, very proactive in working with all of the service providers in making sure that uh, all of the parts and pieces of this plan will fit together and all of the utilities can go in where they need to go in, the uh, roadways make sense, fire can you know get in there and do what they need to do. Um, so it's actually I, just on a you know kind of professional note, it's, it's been a very good learning opportunity for me um, watching how all of this is, is getting worked out. Um, so uh, this is a, a, you know, kind of a good overview of how all of these different residential and commercial um, components are broken out in here. Um, as I'd mentioned, there's 553 lots and uh, the applicant um, believes there would be about 968 units, um, including the uh, apartment sites and the mixed use. Um, this does say acreage 179 um, I'm not sure about the discrepancy there, so I apologize. Um, it may be that the roadways aren't in there. Yeah, maybe. 
it's a total area. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, environmental review, um, there, uh, what is the previously certified final environmental impact report and mitigation monitoring and reporting program for the Cordova Hills SPA, uh, and that is included in your package. There is also uh, a referenced prior addendum for a SMUD substation um, within Cordova Hills. That unfortunately didn't get into your package. Um, however, I believe Joelle had uh, provided copies um, for the record tonight. Um, so that is in the, the package of materials for you as well. And both of those documents feed into um, a current addendum that was prepared for this project. Um, and uh, supports the environmental determinations made in the past um, and carries forward mitigation monitoring and reporting program. So the project went to the Kasumnas uh, CPAC on May 25th, 2022. Council members uh, had a variety of questions uh, and some concerns about the varied densities of the project. Uh, the park size and location, potential traffic and roadway impacts. Um, there was a very robust dialogue, and I think uh, at the end, you know, the applicant, I say here, they sort of outlined the vision for the town center, which is a more walkable urban center for the overall Cordova Hills land use master plan. Um, and the uh, CPAC ended up um, voting six to one um, to recommend approval. So I think they sort of understood the, the overall land use uh, goals of the plan and how this was feeding into them. And so with that, uh, planning and environmental review staff are recommending that the planning commission take the following actions. Determine that the previously certified final environmental impact report and mitigation monitoring and reporting program and prior addendum together with the CEQA addendum for this project is adequate and complete for the proposed project in compliance with CEQA. Uh, adopt the resolution and approve the minor amendments uh, requested to the Cordova Hills SPA ordinance. And then going back to my comments about a lot of the work that the applicants have been doing with the utility providers, uh, we actually did receive a request to do some modifications from for the conditions, um, and you should have received that earlier today by email. Um, the request is related to timing triggers for some SMUD conditions. And so this just sort of is part of that work that the applicants have been doing to make sure that all of the conditions are gonna work when they start implementing this plan. And so uh, from that, Staff is recommending that you approve the phase tentative subdivision map uh, with the amended conditions uh, as shown in the condition modification request dated January 23rd, 2023. And these are conditions number 151 and 153. And again, subject to findings and conditions. And that uh, concludes staff's presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Questions for staff this evening? Commissioner Borja? Yes, just one quick question. Thank you, Chair Rathel. Uh, for the staff, uh, Jessica, thank you so much for uh, a very comprehensive um, presentation. Could you speak to um, any potential litigation that we may, or maybe, maybe, maybe this might be a better question to legal counsel, but I believe that there was previous litigation that was involved to the approval of this master plan. And, and that has previously been already addressed. And I believe there's already been a legal action, but for the record, can you, can you all just speak to that? And if so, would a decision to may impact any of those um, mandates by the court? You know, I'm gonna to defer to the applicant's counsel. He's gonna be much more familiar with that issue than I am. So when he gets up, he can talk about it. Thank you, sir. Any other questions for staff this evening? All right, thank you, Ms. Brandt. At this time, we'll go ahead and invite the applicant up this evening. And the clerk will get you sworn in. Did you have more members of your team that are gonna speak tonight? Because we could get you all sworn in at Unlikely. once. Okay. 
please raise your right hand and the appropriate response is I do. Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give this commission is the truth, so help you God? If you do not swear, do you so affirm? I do. Thank you. Please state your name for the record. Gregory Thatch. Thank you. I always like to joke that the last time I said that, it got me in trouble. Um, I'm pleased to be here tonight to uh, represent Cordova Hills. We do have people with us tonight. If questions do come up uh, from the Cordova Hills team, we have Corey Harpel, who's in charge of this project, Cynthia Tesson, and Cherie Chastain. We also have Holger First from McKay and Sants, and Matt Weir from Kimley Horn. So if you do have questions, I think we've got the right team here to answer those questions. I want to say at the outset that we agree with all of the conditions, uh, and there is no debate about that. It has been my privilege to represent this project since about 2007. Uh, these projects obviously take a while to come to fruition. Um, but it has been a great joy to be able to do that over all of these years. And it is true that there were two other maps that were approved, uh, but I am pleased to say that tonight we're talking about the town center, and that is the project that is going to go first. It's intended to be the heartbeat of this community. Um, it is innovative. It is sustainable. It is an urban design in a very suburban setting. It's designed to be compact, allowing for walking, bicycling, work-live opportunities, and it embraces electrical vehicles, scooters, bicycles, etc. It is really a new way of living in the suburbs. How do you achieve this? Well, you achieve it in part by housing, uh, with a great diversity of housing. There's a place for everyone here in uh, the town center. We can also say that in these blocks that you look at, and we're used to seeing one product type typically in a block, might be RD5, might be RD7, whatever. This one mixes it up. There are two or three different housing types in each one of these blocks, so it mixes it up significantly. The green court was mentioned, which is fairly new to our region. It is a center which is green, it's park-like, and the homes face that, and they all use that as their yard, and it's very safe, and it's very efficient, and it's great for young families. There are no garages on the street. I, I will say this is the first project I've ever worked on where there weren't garages on the street. We're usually talking about um, how we're going to place that garage so it's not so dominant. Uh, here there are none, which means there are no driveways along the street. Everything is alley loaded. So the garages are in the rear uh, of all of these houses. Um, in order to achieve this, there are the minor amendments uh, that Jessica talked about. These were always contemplated. The master plan addresses this, has a section on minor amendments, and it was always understood that as the market changes, things are going to change. And this was approved 10 years ago in 2013. And so we're trying to do some minor amendments, but these do not raise any significant environmental impacts, and they do not change the unit count. So none of that is being changed. We also achieve these goals by the street system that is put in here. These are short blocks. They're not the typical blocks that you see in a suburban setting. These are short blocks, which make it, makes it far easier to walk. There are the park blocks that are Chrysanthi and uh, Town Center. These are the two major roads, and these are block, park blocks with a median that's about 75 feet wide. It's a usable median. Uh, there are park-like um, uh, settings in there. There is a trail in there. You can actually put buildings in there. You could have a cafe. You could have a brewery, that type of thing, right in the park block, which makes it a very, very interesting development, and particularly when you consider that it's going to be uh, one-way traffic on each side of the street. Um, these connect, these park blocks also connect the housing uh, that is on each side directly into the center of gravity uh, of the town center. Again, there are some minor amendments to achieve this, but again, contemplated no environmental impacts. 
We also have a trail and transportation system, about 3.5 miles of trails within the town center. This connects to about 75 miles of trails throughout the entire master plan. There are electric charging stations, and there is a mobility hub centrally located. The mobility hub will have bicycle storage, bicycle repair, it will have charging uh, stations available, particularly for scooters and electric bikes, and uh, adjacent to that will be charging stations for uh, cars and vehicles. Jessica mentioned the switch of the, uh, of the, the uh, school in the park, and it was just kind of flipping those. But I think the beauty of that is it now puts the park at the end of Chrysanthi, and it, it allows the people who are using that park uh, to really get the visual of a 600-acre nature preserve that is out there and will be there in perpetuity. Um, and that will be a tremendous, I think, benefit to the entire community from the park. This is a very sustainable community. I'm not going to hit on everything, but this is zero carbon energy by 2030, 100% electric with minor exceptions, rooftop solar throughout. There's 100 acres of land that is already zoned for solar creation. It is walkable, it is bikeable. Um, there are widely deployed electric char charging stations. There is a shuttle, and the shuttle uh, at build-out will operate at 15-minute uh, headways, and that shuttle will not only take people throughout the project, but take them to the Mather RT station, light rail station. And finally, there is 2,100 acres of habitat preservation and restoration as a result of this project. In closing, I would simply encourage you to vote for this project. It is unique, it is innovative, and it allows for a new way, way to live, work, and recreate. And it's, uh, I'm very proud to be here to be able to present it. And with that, uh, Mr. Chair, I would close my comments and entertain any questions. Thank you, Mr. Thatch. Uh, questions for the applicant team this evening? Greg, can you um, oh, summarize a review for yes. us if there's any existing or any prior litigation that yes. Yes. occurred? Um, yes, there was litigation. Uh, when this project was approved in 2013, the CEQA documentation was challenged in Superior Court. Uh, we in the county prevailed in that lawsuit. Uh, the petitioners in that lawsuit appealed uh, that decision to the Court of Appeal. We also won completely in the Court of Appeal. So there are no lingering issues that uh, require compliance. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant team this evening? Commissioner Corona Sabaniano. Yeah, no, no questions. Just want to say thank you for reaching out and answering my questions about the affordability and the um, parks and the school. So just wanted to note that for the record. Thank you. Thank you. Same here, uh, Chair Rathel. I appreciate um, meeting with the applicant uh, on uh, ahead of this meeting and also answering my questions regarding the uh, financing plan for this um, for this project, as well as uh, my question regarding the the shuttles that, I, as I understand, the community will be providing yes. um, as a as a connection. Um, because there's, uh, there is not yet a SACRT or public transit opportunity in, in the area. So, uh, thank you. All right, I think that wraps up our questions this thank evening. You thank much. you. Uh, with that, we'll move on to public comment. We do not have anyone signed up to speak. All right, we'll go ahead and close public comment and we'll move on to deliberation. I'm just going to state that I, I appreciate that the applicant did reach out as well, but um, I, I like how this new design is really des uh, creating that urban space in a suburban area. Um, I'm thrilled that the project is starting with the, um, the ability to bring in so many diverse types of housing with the commercial corridors to make sure that we're starting with this idea that it will be a livable community. Uh, so I was uh, pleased to see that um, the plan starts that way and is really looking at continuing to build that out in a significant way to support uh, density in, um, 
an area that I think people were very nervous about whether it was just sprawl, but I really think this is a, a livable and walkable community and one that's designed uh, to support that. So I would be happy to make a motion and support staff recommendations. I'll second. And just to be clear, that was with the modification Correct. conditions that were sent earlier today. Mm -hmm. Yes. Perfect. We have a motion and a second. Any further deliberations? All right, will you please call the roll? Actually, since all the members are now in person, um, you can use your voting. Oh, perfect. Thank you. And the motion carries by unanimous vote. All right, thank you all for being here tonight. We're looking forward to it. And we'll move on to the planning director's report. Good evening, commissioners. Todd Smith, your planning director. Um, I don't have a lot to report tonight. I know we have a couple of items, I think three that are uh, hopefully, well, by now they're definitely done and, and on to the clerk of the board for processing for our next hearing on February 6th. Um, I do know February 20th, it's a county holiday, no meeting, which kind of covers our scheduling matters too. Um, I don't have anything else tonight. So just to confirm, we're on February 6th. Yes, sir. Yes, it's, it's um, an unusually scheduled uh, meeting due to the county holiday. Great. So I'll disclose that I will not be available. I will also not be available. All right. So February 6th. Still on as of now? I can be here that evening. Good. Yeah, this is Jessica Brand. I think we'll um, we'll reach out to the applicants and let them know. Sure. And yeah, thank you. All right, uh, that's it for the planning director's report and miscellaneous scheduling items. Yes, it is. All right. Uh, any generic public comments this evening or unagendized items? We do not have anyone on Zoom to make public comments, and there's no one in the chambers. All right. With that, we're going to go ahead and conclude uh, at 6.14 p.m. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Check, check the traffic up at 50. It's really bad. It was terrible getting down here. Yeah.